Welcome. My name is Eric Jorgensen. For those of you that are not familiar, I am the founder of Special Needs Navigator. I started Special Needs Navigator to help families like mine navigate the maze of benefits, resources, and services. This webinar that I'm doing on Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, or food stamps, it's been known by all of those, is a benefit program. And as with all of these videos, it's meant to be short and provide an introduction. The longer form videos I'm doing that are interviews will be converted into podcasts, and I expect to start airing those in October. Today, I will be reviewing an overview of what Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program is, how you were, what you need to do to be eligible for SNAP, what, is, what you can use it for, and then I will include a calculator at the end to show you what you can expect if you have income. I built a calculator to try to help families understand how much they may be eligible for. It's a supplement. It is not meant to be enough to buy all of your groceries for a month. It's really, when you see the value amounts of how much you're gonna get, you're gonna really understand it's, it's not really a very substantial amount. They have different rules for people that are disabled or elderly and those who are, who are able-bodied, in air quotes. Today, I'm gonna to be focusing on strictly those who are disabled and those rules that I'm covering for the disabled are going to be the same as for the elderly. Now, to become to be eligible, you have to have less than $3,500 in assets. If you're receiving SSI and or Medicaid, then in most states, you have, you have to have less than $2,000 in assets. So if you're receiving SSI and or Medicaid, you should already meet this eligibility requirement. However, they will count cars. If you have a car, depending on what you're using that car for, it may count towards the eligibility. And you, the fair market value, it, which is what FMV is, can't be less, can't be more than $4,600. A note about net income versus gross income. I have the explanations on here. Uh, earned and unearned income. Earned income is what you make from a salary or a wage. Unearned income is going to be something like a pension or social security. There are going to be some deductions that you're going to be able to use. You get an earned income deduction. Everybody gets a standard deduction depending on how big your household is. Some cases you might be able to get child support and then there's going to be expenses in excess of what you should be spent, what they think you should be spending for housing and, and medical. Uh, real quickly, when you get some, when you get SNAP, you are limited to what you can buy. You have to buy real food. You can't buy prepared foods. So you may not be able to purchase that rotisserie chicken in the at Costco, but you absolutely can go and buy a dozen eggs or bananas or, um, you know, canned goods like green beans and stuff like that. Those are, those are considered foods that you can prepare. There are additional things that you can do nowadays. Many states will allow you to buy food online because of COVID. So you're going to want to look to see locally whether that you are going to be eligible for that. You will also want to understand how your, how your payments come to you. Most of them are coming to on, an, on a, like a debit card that'll recharge every month. So that's, and then you just spend it just like you would a debit card. This is the amount you get every month. As you can see, the benefit is not very much. Many families have asked me how much should we be spending. That's really hard for me to say how much you should be spending. When people don't have a clue, I will tell them nowadays it's probably a safe bet to say you're spending between $75 to $100 per week per person. So for simple math, if you have one person in the house and you're spending $100 a week, that's $400 a month. And you can see getting SNAP food stamps for one person is only going to cover about half of your monthly grocery bill. And that doesn't include things that you're going to need to buy paper towels 
toilet paper, tissues, uh, laundry detergent, you know, things like that, that, that still, you still have to buy. So I, that was the end of the slideshow. I do have one more thing I want to show you, the calculator that I built for families. So we have over here a calculator that I built to help families understand what they may be eligible for. Now, every state, I believe, will have a eligibility calculator. So we're going to use my son as an example. He has zero earned income. And he's receiving $100 in SSI and $404 in SSDI. So his total gross income is $504. There is a standard deduction right here. He, the household size is one. So the maximum income he can make is 1,041. He does not have any dependent care. He does not have any unpaid medical expenses. Child support is not, Henry is NA. He's not um, in a homeless shelter. If he was, if, if the state of Maryland was one of the states that allows homeless standard shelter, you could type that in and it would have, a, there's an automatic deduction. But since there's not, and he doesn't, he's not homeless, we're going to put no. So half of his adjusted income is. 168.50 total shelter cost is um, I'm not charging him anything for sure we'll say I'm charging him six hundred dollars a month for shelter so excess is 431 net monthly income because you subtract the excess of shelter cost is zero is he will receive the full benefit of 194 dollars well, let's say he earned income let's say he earned 500 dollars a month in the earned income as well so now his gross income goes to $1,000, right? So he's still above this. Half of his adjusted income is, um, you know, going to be right here. So he still meets the limits. That's meant to be a primer of what it looks like to receive supplemental nutrition assistance. Uh, it's not the end all be all. I really encourage you, if you have a child who is over the age of 22, living with you or living on their own, to apply for SNAP because it is their benefit. It is not your benefit. And when you die, even if they're living with you, it's something they're gonna to have to apply for after you're gone. So it's better to go ahead and get them to start it now. As always, I encourage you to reach out to me, Eric, especially as navigator, if you have questions or if there are topics that you would like me to cover in more depth.